Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great Thursday. Uh, another day closer to the weekend. Got a beautiful day out there. I just heard more more rain coming in over the weekend maybe, but uh, I don't know. I, I just, just last week my wife was saying, oh, it doesn't look like there's any more rain on the radar on the uh, you know, what the, on the app, it was saying you know, for the next couple of weeks, but then all of a sudden now we are going to have rain over the weekend. I guess you just, just have to stick around and the, the weather will change on us. But, uh, but anyway, today I want to share with you another, another, uh, good story. We'll do these again tomorrow and then we'll probably, uh, leave stories behind for a while. But, uh, uh this story, I, I like this story. It's kind of a cute story and, uh, has everything to do with, uh, kind of sisters getting along and uh, I can relate to that with three uh, daughters that uh, sometimes have trouble getting along in certain ways. But uh, but anyway, the, the title of this story is called Bread Crusts. And it's uh, several years old, I think, from Louise Seymour Hasbrook. And uh, it's, a, it's a cute story. It begins like this. If you don't look out, Mary, you'll spoil Rita, commented Grandfather Wainwright. Spoil Rita, queried Mrs. Wainwright turning surprised with her hand on the doorknob. She was going to her evening session in the library. You mean Peggy, don't you? I suppose we do spoil her, but she she does love parties so, and Rita is just naturally a, a stay-at-home and so unselfish. It was, it was so much of a common occurrence in the Wainwright household that somebody must stay home with Grandfather on account of his weak heart that even Grandfather himself had ceased to protest about it. I don't mean Peggy, I mean Rita, insisted old Mr. Wainwright. Mrs. Wainwright regarded him with astonished eyes as she, as she buttoned her coat. Then her expression changed. One could not expect father to always keep his own keen mind. I'll try not to spoil either of them, she assured him, slipping through the living room to speak to Rita, who was washing the supper dishes in the kitchen. You remember, dear, to give Grandpa his medicine at 8.30, won't you? She, she queried. Of course I will, Mother, answered Rita, a tall, pale, and conscientious-looking girl. My dear, thoughtful, unselfish daughter, whispered Mrs. Wainwright with a little hug. Rita's face colored faintly as she tried not to look self-satisfied. Praise like this, especially from her mother, whom she adored, was very sweet to her. After I play dominoes with grand, after I play grand dominoes with grandfather, I'll mend that dress of Peggy's. She's pro she promised. She never will do it herself, you know. It would be so nice of you if you would. Mrs. Wainwright departed. Peggy, 16, pretty and curly-haired, tripped downstairs and, and demanded of her grandfather, How do you like me, Grandpa, in my new apricot? You'll pass any place where, there's not too, where they're not too particular. Kind of a pity your hair and skirts don't keep up with the rest of you, though. Grandpa, you certainly put a mean twist in your compliments. You wouldn't want me to be a back number, would you? His reply was cut short by Rita, who appeared from the dining room where she had been putting away dishes, saying, Do keep still a minute, Peggy. Something is wrong here. A shade came over Peggy's face as she surveyed Rita on her, on her knees, busy about her skirt. It was not her night to do the supper dishes, but nevertheless, the sight of the pile of unwashed supper dishes through the open door gave her a guilty pang. Oh, Rita... It seems mean for me to be going out all the time instead of you. I'll finish the dishes for you, and I wish you'd go in my place. Yes, this is a fine time to say it, scoffed Rita, rising. Like many self-denying persons, she was somewhat given to remarks with prickles in them. But I did say to whom to say so when we were first invited, Peggy protested. Did you? Rita's indulgent tone did not make the younger sister any more comfortable, nor did her little superior smile. After Peggy had gone, Rita fe fetched the dominoes with a discontented face. For after all, she was a young girl and human. Play a game, Grandfather? If you want to, replied Grandfather, and it suddenly struck Rita that he said it just as though he were humoring her. Humoring her. Why, I don't care about it, she was irritated into admitting. I only play on your account. It's just as I said, remarked Grandfather dreamily. Your mother and Peggy are spoiling you. You're getting more like your great Aunt Beulah every day. Spoiling me? What do you mean? Demanded the astounded Rita. She was the most unpleasantly unselfish person I ever knew, reminisced Grandfather further. Grandfather? Yes, ma'am. Too unselfish to live, or rather to live with. She drove us all crazy. 
You couldn't be comfortable a minute when she was in the room. She was always bothering you to move near the light or out of the draft or something, and you couldn't get a crust of bread when she was at the table. But did the other people want the crust, inquired Rita dazedly. No, they'd, they'd have liked a, a chance to be unselfish too. Most everybody would. Here, grandfather took up his paper and calmly began reading. After a moment of flushed, indignant silence, Rita went to find Peggy's torn dress. Very well. If grandfather didn't appreciate her, mother did, and others too. Peggy might be the prettier, the more popular sister, but she had not overheard two, but had she not overheard two of Peggy's very best friends when discussing who would be present at the festivity, say to one to the other, Rita Wainwright won't go. Of course, she always stays home with her grandfather and lets Peggy have the good times. Rita has a wonderful character, you know, so unselfish. Peggy thoroughly enjoyed the party. She always did, but it seemed that there was something still more gorgeous on foot, a, a seashore picnic. You've got to come along, Rita, she insisted the next day at dinner. Mother will be home from the library tomorrow, you know. But we haven't any bathing suits. The Wainwrights had only lived in this seaside town for a few months since their widowed mother had obtained the position of librarian and had hardly had time or money to acquire such extras. Mildred is sure she can borrow some for us. That's probably her phoning now. Peggy ran to the telephone and came back in a moment looking very much disappointed. Mildred says everybody on earth seems to be planning to use bathing suits on this holiday, so all she can borrow is one. Then you'll go, of course, said Rita. I don't see why. You learned to swim, you know, on your visit to grandfather's before we came here, and I never have. Anyway, it's your turn, or more than your turn. Please do go. But deep down in Rita's heart, there was a qualm at the idea of going off with the crowd, Peggy's crowd. She considered them, though several of the boys and girls were her own age. She was so quiet and not pretty. They wouldn't like her as they did Peggy. But now, well, they admired her anyway, and, and that was something. Looking up, she met her mother's softly, softly expectant gaze. Of course, I wouldn't deprive you of the pleasure, she said in her most elder sister manner. Bread crust, murmured Grandfather Wainwright with a mischievous smile over his plate. Rita grew hot all over. Is the bread baked too hard, Father? inquired Mrs. Wainwright innocently. I should have made biscuits for you, but don't make them for me, said Grandfather. Rita might like a crusty one now and then. Rita pushed away her plate. If Grandfather kept this up, she would leave the table. Peggy looked from one to the other wonderingly. Then the clock chimed. There, it's three, said Peggy. I promised to go with Harriet and play hymns for the children at the orphanage. It's such a lark. They love it, and you ought to hear them sing, the poor dears. Excuse me, please, Mother, and excuse me, please, if I grab your dishes and deprive anyone of a last bite. They've got to be done in just five minutes. And in just five minutes, she dashed off on her mission, which in some girls might have seemed unselfish, but to Peggy was apparently only more fun. Next morning, the sun rose in all its splendor, ushering in a, a perfect picnic day. Mildred arrived at the Wainwrights with her one borrowed bathing suit. Peggy, who opened the door, welcomed her. You're going, aren't you, Peggy? inquired Mrs. Wainwright placidly. I thought when it came to the point, Rita wouldn't let you stay home. Why, I really don't know. I'll ask her again. Peggy called to Rita above. Oh, Rita, here's Mildred. Are you going or not? Rita descended deliberately. I told you I wouldn't, she began. When Grandfather looked meaningfully at her from his corner, he formed two words with his lips. Perhaps I will go. After all, it's my turn, she suddenly replied. Why, that's fine, Peggy stammered, making a heroic effort to hide her surprise. Mildred, a blunt youngster, stared at Rita, amazed and disappointed. Oh, I thought, of course, Peggy would go, she exclaimed. Worse than anything for Rita was her mother's surprised face, yet she bravely kept to her decision. Peggy has been telling me I ought to accept invitations more, she explained to Mildred. Then without wanting for the ladders or waiting for the ladders lame rejoinder, she sped back upstairs, hearing as she went Peggy remark indignantly to her friend, Mildred, you as much tact as, as a can opener, and Rita is a regular dear. With tears in her eyes, Rita dressed. She would try to be frivolous now. She would go on the picnic, even if Mother did call Peggy her unselfish daughter. 
Late that afternoon, a sunburned quartet noisily entered the Wainwright house. It was Mildred, her brother Harry, his friend Stanley Richards, and Rita, but not the same Rita who had gone out that morning. Here was a pink-cheeked, bright-eyed girl, positively handsome. Just stopped in to tell you how we missed you, Peggy, cried Mildred for the crowd. But we must tell you that your sister is a good sport, too, and a wonder in the water, and as far as for boiling cocoa and frying eggs over a driftwood fire and leading the singing, she simply can't be beat. Peggy beamed at the assembled boys and girls. Glad you waked up, she said. Didn't I say you didn't realize the abilities of my distinguished sister? Rita felt all washed inside and out with fresh air and happy thoughts. How unkind she had been about Peggy, putting her in a false position so often that just that she herself might feel superior. Strikes me you didn't ha you you haven't been moping yourself, Peggy, observed Stanley. Who'd you make all this fudge and popcorn for, us weary swimmers? I should say night not, cried Peggy. Though you're welcome to the leftovers, I had the time of my life. Walter Eaton, the, the lame boy, you know, from across the street and his sister Marie, and I had a party. I just love to stay at home. It's a circus. Grandfather, cried Rita, she likes bread crust too. Of course she does. She spells her name P-E-G, not P-I-G, replied her shrewd ancestor. Tell me, what is this code you and grandfather are always talking about, inquired Peggy. Some other time. They'll eat all that popcorn before I get a bit of it if I explain it to you now, replied her reformed sister. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a fun story. Uh, part of it because I can relate to that and, and my one of my daughters is, is a little bit like uh, Rita sometimes. And, and uh, you know, it, it makes me think of humility. Humility is an interesting thing, isn't it? Uh, we can have humility to a fault, and, and it turns into something like it did with uh, Rita, where she, she's even a little irritated by it, but yet on the other hand, she still uh, still wanted to do it. Uh, she wanted to be seen as the better person, and, and that, that's when really humility loses its, uh, its effectiveness. That might be a way of saying it. Uh, Paul, in, in Philippians 2, he, he says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of the others. And, and I think that's a good word for us. I mean, humility is, is it, it needs to be real. Uh, it needs to be where we do it with this heart of, of, you know, of love for others instead of sort of just, uh, you know, selfish ambition or, or vain. Because actually, something you do in humility can be out of selfish ambition if it makes you look better. Uh, that's kind of part of that. Uh, it goes on, that passage says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. I, I think that's uh, uh, something to be used for our own advantage. Sometimes we use humility that way, and, and it loses its effectiveness. Instead, we need to be like Jesus, who, who, who he didn't do anything to his own advantage, but, but for the advantage of others. He goes on, rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, he being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Uh, Jesus went to the cross for us, and, and he did it with a humility. With a, you know, He wasn't doing it so that we'd think better of him, but he was doing it for us because of his love for us, because he cared about us, because it was not for his own advantage, but, but for ours. He wanted to do it for us. And that's the humility with which we need to do things. Uh, you know, not, not like this Rita who at first anyway, she, she was doing things just because she wanted to look better. Because um, that was kind of her place, her role in the family to, to stay at home and take care of her grandfather while her sister went out and had fun. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's not real humility. Humility is when we don't look to our own interests, but, but want to serve others, want to a heart out of the heart uh, overflows these things. Well, let's pray together. Lord, uh, thank you for this little story. It's kind of humorous. Uh, these two sisters and uh, one kind of thought she was doing things in humility, but really wasn't. It was really uh, for so she'd look good and kind of play the role of a martyr and all that. And Lord, help us to, to serve people out of a heart of love, just like Jesus, to take on the same attitude as Jesus. Help us to do that 
on a daily basis to to do things because we want to do them, because we want to to serve others. Lord, help us to to do that. Uh, sometimes it's hard, and and you know we look at those that just go and and don't do those things, like like this sister. And, you know, there's a little bit of uh, of uh, jealousy there. Lord, help us to just have hearts that are willing to serve, willing to love, willing to to go the extra mile for for you, if for no other reason, for you, because of what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we do lift up all those that uh, need a touch from you, need encouraging, need need uh, you know a touch, a, a healing going through physical issues, Lord, we continue to lift up all those that are uh, dealing with things like that. Uh, thank you for a good report from Etta uh, yesterday at the doctor's office that uh, they actually were able to find a few platelets, and we thank you for that. Uh, you know, we pray that that would continue, and uh, her hemoglobin was up a little bit, and Lord, we just thank you for both of those things. Those are answers to prayer. We've been praying that those things would improve, and we thank you that this week they have for the first time in a long time. So just continue to be with her. Be with others as well. Uh, we just lift them to you. Continue to help us with the coronavirus. Encourage those that need encouraging. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, be with us the rest of this day. May we just serve you with uh, uh, glad hearts. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today. We'll be back again tomorrow with uh, another devotional, another story uh, for you. And uh, you have a great rest of the day. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.